Hi everyone in the giant schnauzer community. I'm going to do a test breeding for you today. So I'm going up here to the dog search part of our program. So I'm going to search the first couple dogs that were recommended to me in our group because that's what's fair. So I'm searching Tito. You can search a partial part of a name um, to, in order to get what you need and it'll pull up their names. So I'm searching a part for Tito von Elberfeld. Now if I butcher anything, I'm sorry, I try my best with dogs' names. We're going to go to his profile. Now if he's uploaded a photo for him, a photo will show up, but likely not yet because he was just uploaded today. Okay, so this is the profile. Here's where a photo would be. Here's his general information. You can add sire and dam, which will show up here. Genetics. This is what we get from your certificate at UC Davis. This dog is homozygous for these DLA types, which is not necessarily bad. These are probably some of the most common DLA types since he's homozygous. Uh, so if all things are equal in your breedings, try to create heterozygous puppies and look for the less common DLA types in your population, but it's not the largest thing you should be considering. Okay, so outlier index. This tells you how typical or atypical a dog is for a population. Now, you guys have lots of different genetics in your population in this sample that we tested. We tried very hard to get samples from all over the world, and so we know that your breed as a whole has a lot of different genetics. And currently, your breed average is sitting around 0.29, which is higher than a lot of bottlenecked breeds. Now, as we sample more and more of your population, this number may drop as there may be a breed-specific bottleneck around particular lines. Rebecca has done a very good job demonstrating that there have been a lot of popular sires in your breed, so it's possible this number will drop. So we will want to keep an eye on the outlier index to make sure that we are keeping your genetics distributed within your population. This Number here, average genetic relatedness, tells you how closely related your dog is to other dogs in the population. The lower it is, the less related to other dogs. The higher it is, the more related it is to other dogs. So this dog's right around breed average. Same thing with the outlier index. So an outlier index, you want to be higher. Average genetic relatedness, you want to be negative. And so now we'll move on down to internal relatedness. The more negative an IR, the more outbred a dog. The more positive an IR, the more inbred dog. So this boy is more outbred. HL is another inbreeding measurement. Um, basically, it's around the percentage of the, of the genes that were found to be inbred. And then this is kind of easy to understand, percent of the breed that's unrelated to this dog. If you want more information, you can go to advanced analysis, but this is kind of an overall summary of everything. Okay, so if he's added health information or temperament and appearance information, that would appear down here. So you would click on each of these and it'll give you that information. And he's black. And you can contact the owner because the owner hasn't made it public who's the owner. You can send an email privately here. Okay, so I'm going to go to breeding tools. In bottlenecked breeds, these top two ones are important because it'll sort by higher OI to lower OI and or conversely less AGR to higher AGR. So I usually use these. You can also sort by color. So if people have added your colors, you'll be able to see if a dog is pepper salt or black. So I'm going to go by OI. This will directly compare him to another dog. So you can also use that and maybe I'll show that in another video. Okay, so here is our breedings. So I was offered a Firestones, let's see, check real quick, Firestone Special Blend, and it turns out that she is a Category 10 with him. And the first three numbers here are her information, so I believe this is OI, IR, and AGR. So she has a lower OI in the breed, which may mean that she has... Um, common genetics, but that's not necessarily bad. Um, and then IR, she's right around breed average for how inbred, and this is not a high number, um, right around zero or below is where you want to be. Uh, and she's less related to the population. This is AGR. And this is the breeding 
how closely related these two dogs are to each other. I do 3,000 puppies because our system's pretty fast now. So I push this. It used to say whelping, which was really funny. You'd be whelping 3,000 puppies. That's a lot better than a litter of 3,000. So anyway, let's go back up to the top while it's running that, and I'll talk about these categories. So category 10 all the way down to 1. If you had a dog in category 1, that will mean it was a identical twin. Two is usually parents and siblings. So if you test your relatives, you will find them in category two, parents and siblings. Category three, siblings and sibling cousins. Category four, so these are the closest related dogs to Tito in the database. And then five, so on and so forth. We usually recommend category six and above. When you get below down into these categories, your IR and breeding of your litters will start to get pretty high. As you see, you'll see in a moment, um, the we can see that or what's the range. So let's go to the summary. Analysis, analysis will give you a lot more detail than the summary, but I'm just going to look at the summary here. So let's go over to the summary between these two dogs. Okay, so up you pull the outlier index potential range and the internal relatedness potential range. And I really enjoy having these graphs because you can really get an idea where your puppies are going to fall. So your breed average for outlier index is right around 0.29. A lot of the puppies will fall below that. Um, usually we try to say you want to have your averages at least fall at the average. Um, so there, but there will be some above your breed average. You have your minimum of 0.11 to 0.42 and um, your in your internal relatedness here, you can see where we go. The majority of puppies will be below zero, which is what we recommend. Um, and here is your minimum, negative 0.32 to 0.33. Now, why does this go high? It's because you're all the same breed. So it's very few that are above 0.15, which is kind of like the cutoff for being pretty inbred. Um, so this is actually a fairly good breeding. Just a few, or not too many are above zero. So... In terms of IR, um, this is a fairly good breeding. In terms of OI, uh, just as a breed, I, I would recommend keeping an eye on OI and making sure that it doesn't drop lower over time because that'll mean that you're starting to become more bottlenecked and possibly losing different genetics in your population. Um, here's a one thing that's nice about this breeding is that the sire and dam have different DLA haplotypes, so every puppy will be heterozygous and um, and so that I, I like that aspect of this breeding. So, okay. And I always say, I do not know the phenotype of these dogs, their work ethic, their temperament drive, etc. Uh, we cannot recommend that, that it is up to you as breeders. So your health testing and everything you've always used to identify whether or not a breeding is quality or not will still remain. Okay, well, this is just my first demonstration video. I will try to make some more for you guys, um, but I, I'd say fairly overall, this is a fairly good breeding in terms of IR. The OI is a little bit below your breed average, but you still go up pretty high, so you might want to test puppies and see, make sure that they're staying around your breed average. So, okay, well, thank you for watching. Feel free to ask questions.